Hey guys, welcome to my channel. In this video, I want to talk about three ways you can avoid and getting screwed over in a partnership and collaboration. And yeah, we definitely want to avoid that. So if you're interested in that, please keep watching. So hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new to my channel, I invite you to subscribe to my channel. If you're not new here, welcome back. I'm excited to have you here with me today. And today we're talking about partnerships and how you can avoid getting screwed over in a partnership or a collaboration because partnerships can be a great thing, right? I mean, partnerships can help us grow in our business and it can help us scale. I mean, in fact, two heads are better than one, right? Or is it? It really depends on doing your due diligence and setting up for a successful partnership. But in this video, I want to talk about three ways you can avoid getting screwed over in a partnership or collaboration. Because unfortunately, when it comes to partnerships and collaborations, um, you don't always see eye to eye and people get screwed over sometimes. And so I wanted to offer three ways and you can avoid making these costly mistakes because when it comes to partnerships, they can cost you money in your business. And so we want to not make those mistakes so we can be successful and see our business grow and scale and all of the things that a great partnership really does for our business. So number one, the first way you can avoid getting screwed over in a partnership is get it in writing. I mean, this should come uh, as common sense to us being that we're in business, but a lot of times we don't do it. I mean, I, for one, am guilty of this and have done this over the years where I haven't gotten things in writing. I've partnered with people or wanted to do a collaboration, but because they were friends or family perhaps, you don't get things in writing. Even if they're not friends or family, sometimes you feel like you just trust a person and you don't think that you need it in writing. But trust me, you need it in writing. And so when you get it in writing, when you write up an agreement or a contract for a partnership agreement or a collaboration, there are certain things that you want to consider when writing this agreement. And one thing that I would always always suggest putting in this agreement so you don't get screwed over is to define the expectations of both parties, both you and the other party that you're looking to partner with or collab with because that is essential and I cannot stress enough how important it is to spell out the expectations for each party. And so another thing that you definitely want to include in this agreement, in this written contract, whatever you want to call it, sometimes saying agreement over a contract just softens the blow to the other person, especially if you say, hey, let's get into writing. Um, if you say contract, I don't know, for some reason people get, feel some sort of way about a contract. So if you say agreement, it just sounds better. But one thing you want to spell out in your agreement is the revenue split, especially if there's a revenue split. So you want to define the revenue split just so you're on the same page about who gets what and who doesn't get what or whatever the case is. The terms, you know, will always look different for everyone and whatever their agreement is. So you want to spell out the revenue split. That is important to have in your agreement or contract, whatever you want to call it. And so number two, when it comes to not wanting to get screwed over in a partnership or a collaboration, number two should be evaluate your personalities. Because the thing is with a partnership or collaboration, whatever it is, it's essentially a marriage, okay? A marriage or a relationship, whatever you want to call it, it is because an agreement, a partnership, is a contracted commitment. So what is a marriage? Is a contracted commitment, right? So you want to make sure that this, that your personalities jive with one another because there have been times, especially in my, my personal experience, where my personality and how I 
I operate doesn't necessarily mesh well with the person that I was looking to partner with and how they operate. So when it comes to a partnership, you want to make sure that your personalities gel together and that you can successfully execute whatever you're trying to execute because, you know, personalities, whatever, for whatever reason, don't always gel with one another. And you want to make sure that you can execute whatever you're trying to execute in the most harmonious fashion possible. So evaluate your personalities, make sure you're a good fit for one another because not always will you be a good fit. So if it's not a good fit, then that's what it is. But if it is, then that's a great thing and it will make a great partnership. And so for number three, win not wanting to get screwed over in a partnership or a collaboration. Number three you need to consider is metrics. Now, when it comes to executing whatever you're going to execute in your partnership or collaboration, you need to know that the other person is doing their part. And so having some sort of metrics in place to, to have some sort of measurement of whether or not the person you and your partner are doing what they're supposed to be doing. Now, one of the great things about number one, which is putting it in writing, is you define the expectations. But how can you measure those expectations? How can you measure that they're doing what they're supposed to be doing? Because one thing that typically happens, especially in a partnership or a collaboration, is that one person might feel like they're doing more work than the other person. And you definitely do not want that feeling because it causes resentment and resentment in a partnership is no good. We don't want that in a partnership. So having some sort of metrics in place, some sort of measurement of some sort where you can kind of give the other person a peace of mind that they are doing their part and that you're doing your part is just a great way to maintain a healthy partnership but also not to get screwed over because if that person is not holding up their end of the bargain, then you have uh, evidence. You have evidence that they're not doing their part because even in defining expectations, that can be very general. And so having metrics in place is a great way to not get screwed over in a partnership or collaboration. So that's all I have for this video. I hope you found it helpful. Partnerships and collaborations can be an amazing thing, especially in business. It helps you grow, it helps you scale, and really, essentially, two heads are better than one. It helps you kind of get outside of your box a little bit when you can bounce off ideas with other per people, and you know, honestly, it helps you expand your horizons as a business. And so partnerships and collaborations are amazing, amazing tools, whether it's in your business or you're just collaborating with another business, it's just an amazing way to expand your business. And so I am a big fan of partnerships. However, there are things that need to be set in place to avoid getting screwed over in a partnership. So I hope you found these three tips, three ways helpful. And that's all I have for this video. If you have any other ideas, I would love to know. Leave your comments below. And if you haven't already, subscribe to my channel. And I will check you in the next video. Peace.